What made you want to participate in Happening, and what do you think it'll mean for the local, national, and international conversation around renewable energy? Well, I wanted, I wanted, I wanted to participate because we can make a difference in this country, not only in my community. Um, now we have a platform, and it's a great story to tell. And I'm just proud that the city of Georgetown, you know, 100% renewable energy, and uh, we can share our story. I, Natel, my brother, my family were interested in being a part of this and committed to uh, transforming the way we do hydropowers. We have the tools at hand to create the solutions uh, in front of us, um, and we just need to make it happen. The solution is boring. How do you engage the public to have a baseline understanding of what just may save this entire planet? And right now, I just felt like people didn't have a baseline understanding. If we truly want a clean energy future, we can have it. The trick is we really have to work for it. Um, so I think that this movie is you know, just activating that people power, that we can have the future that we want. We just really have to work for it. With Vote Solar leading the political fight for solar across the country, what can we learn from Nevada? The Nevada saga sort of had these bookends of two extremes. Um, on one side was a brutal loss uh, to the state of Nevada, thousands of jobs lost between uh, Christmas Eve and, and New Year's Day. Um, but that activated the public in a way we've never seen. And it resulted in the most successful legislative session for clean energy in US history. Um, and so I think that the story is, um, is we don't want to make that mistake that we made in Nevada. We know that Americans, the super majority of Americans, support clean energy. Um, and so let's just give the public what they want. Is political divisiveness going to keep Republicans in a space of being climate skeptics and against renewable energy? And if they are going to change, what is it going to take to get more politicians like you? I don't know a lot about politics, but I do know this that if you win the economic argument, you're gonna win the environmental argument because nobody is gonna argue about self-interest. What we did in Georgetown, we were able to sign 25 and 20 year contracts, fix pricing for the next 25 years. We know what we're gonna cost, what it's gonna cost, okay? Our, our taxpayers and our ratepayers, the ones that we provide electricity for, it's a good mix in Georgetown of Democrats and Republicans, but they're all into green and the green is the money that we're saving them currently. <laughs> Well, it doesn't really matter if you're a Republican or, or Democrat, but the bottom line is you need to do what's right for the folks that you were elected to serve. And if you can provide cost-effective energy to them, that's a no-brainer. Why wouldn't we do that each and every day? Tell us about how you think about being inspired by nature in the design of the Natal system. And is there a broader trend for using nature to inspire technology? How, how do we take hydropower, which is a renewable energy source is noted in the film that has been around for over 100 years, um, has actually been a huge part of our grid and our energy supply to date, but carries with it a legacy that is in some cases quite destructive from an environmental perspective. So we looked to nature's engineers, to beavers. Can we, can we learn from that and do hydro in a more distributed way, in a way that gets away from uh, the necessity to build big dams and large civil infrastructure, which then has all of these, uh, these follow-on negative environmental Im and often social impacts. So that was the genesis of the idea. Do distributed hydro, drive to lower impact, make it more sustainable. Why was it important for you to be on both sides of the camera? And what do you hope that this film and the, the, all of the activity around it, what do you hope that it achieves? As I was starting to do research for this project, I was constantly coming up against that feeling that I was a hypocrite, that I really didn't understand what I was doing, and that it was complicated, and it was stressful, and how was I ever going to get to the point of, of, of expertise where I could sort of deliver something um, that I'd felt like I had sort of mastered. I just felt like being honest and learning as I went and just, you know, I, I, I'm not here to, to do anything other than tell a story. And for me, the thing that's most rewarding is getting in front of people, sharing the story, having people in that local community who know how the issue plays in that community up on stage with me and starting a dialogue in a room sometimes bigger than this, sometimes smaller. There's gonna be hundreds of these screenings. We've put an enormous amount of effort into establishing partnerships. So it's really the people that are sitting next to me that make it all happen. But that's my hope, is that I'm out there with my, my allies and the hardworking people and making for change. For each of you, 
as you look over the next 50 years as we make this energy transition, what gives you hope? I'm optimistic. I think by 2045, 80% of the U.S. will be powered by renewable energy, and I'll tell you why. If you are a coal miner, your job is never coming back. Coal is very expensive, so that's going to be out of the mix as soon as all of the cities and counties get out of their bad contracts because they'll, they'll expire, and then they will go to renewable. Okay, once you pay off your windmills and you pay off your solar panels after 10 years, what's your cost of good solar on producing energy? You're not paying for the sunshine, and you're not paying for the wind in Texas. So how is a fossil fuel company going to possibly compete with wind, solar, and hydro? The, that is going to dominate, and that's going to win. I think the thing that keeps me very excited is the combination of communities, the power of people, um, particularly communities who you might not think are necessarily uh, going to become advocates or or uh, or uh, of of renewable energy and of making this transition. But once they see that this is actually something that um, helps mm -hmm. them carve out a future for some, for example, some of the irrigation districts we work with, they see this as a way to generate additional revenue from their existing infrastructure, from water that's already moving through their system to support ag. So the power of, of combining that community um, and communities, again, who you might not think would be uh, in the forefront with the power of technology and particularly the power of, of data and information. So I think there's some really exciting uh, progress right ahead. I feel very hopeful that this holy grail of dealing with the inter intermittency of renewables um, is going to be solved in the next five to ten years. It's going to be a massive breakthrough.